it, but I didn't, so I apologize. Um, I just wanted to clarify for those that had uh, reached out, the cost for returning the curriculum for the Wonders materials was actually just under $1,700, not $10,000. And so one of the ladies had um, asked for me to make sure I got that information out. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Okay, is that it? Okay. I think the only, actually the only one, because for Carlin, it's her zone, but I think Susie is trying to organize some informational meetings down in Blanchard. Okay. Yep. We yeah. just want to, because okay. we're trying to cover, get out into the different areas, and maybe it could be something, not just levy time, but for other things, we might look at where we can go to reach out to the community. All right. Thank you. Um, next is administrator director reports. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Parker, principal at Priest River Elementary School. And so I have um, given the board members um, two um, March and April's newsletters. I also have given you a, we have a math night tomorrow night from five to six. The first 200 people that come get a take home dinner, a hot dog dinner that they get to, so five to six, we're gonna be busy playing games and the parents, um, they're set seminars for parents to help their ki their children with math. And so they're set seminars every um, 20 minutes. And then while the parents are in seminars, we're going to be playing games. And then when the families are done with their seminar, they can come back and play games with their students. They'll get a hot dog dinner and a baggie that I just put together with card games, of different math card games that they can take home and play with their kids and help their kids with math in a fun way. Another thing that's coming up at Priest River Elementary is our, on May 2nd, we're having our kindergarten registration. And so that is coming up. And so I wanted the board to have that information. Um, and so it also has what they need to bring. And um, you just come on in and between 8 and 3. And Chris, will, Chris and Angie will help you register for kindergarten. Um, things that we've had, and I didn't get to share them last time because I think I shared about what the four-day work week would look, four-day school week would look like at PRE. So um, we had an amazing assembly, the fun Funky Monkey, and it was an assembly that I found out of Texas. They flew here, and um, two gentlemen did a presentation for us. It was a lot of fun, and um, they really jazzed up our kids for getting ready for the ISAT testing, and really all of our kids, we had everybody participate and because all of our students are taking their end of the year assessment. And so we had everyone participate. Another thing that we've done that was major was we had our, um, our dance performance, and Anne um, was there with us and worked hard with our students, and we had second through um, sixth grade classes dancing and we had a day performance for second and third grade and a night performance for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And it was amazing and um, it was on the, in the newspaper and it, it's on the website uh, in my newsletters if you want to take a look at those pictures. But it was a lot of fun. The parents were really impressed with all of the kids, what the kids could do. I think I shared about Minion Day. We had Minion Day. We have PBIS awards. And we had Minion Day where we all got to dress up as minions, and that was a lot of fun. We did Read Across America, um, and so those were all of the things in March. So this month we have, um, we were lucky to have the Odd Fellows come, and um, one of the things that fifth graders learn is about um, the world and um, the United States, and they study states and they do state reports. And so when they came and asked me last year, well, what grade level would you like us to come and donate atlases to? And I said, you know, really, the grade level that needs it the most is our fifth grade students because of what they're studying in social studies. And so that's who they give the books to at PRE. And it was pretty neat. If you look in these pictures, um, they got to spend a little time with each kid. Um, you see, can see um, the two people that came, and one of them is here with us today. Thank you so much for coming and doing that. And Rodrigo came, and um, it's just a neat thing to see them tell about themselves, tell about Odd Fellows and what they do and how they were um, created, and then actually spend a few minutes with kids looking at the books and 
telling about Rodrigo's actually from, where's he from? Brazil. Brazil. And he got to share a little about where he's from. And um, so the kids um, had a lot of fun with that. Um, we had our snack drive and we made, it, it was a different concept this time. We normally do a food drive in the spring and we did a snack drive. And what was cool about the snack drive was students were bringing things for our own students to have for spring break if they didn't have food. And so we made, um, the PTO came in and made um, like bags for students to take home for spring break and, and shared that food with our own peers. And so they well in, um, surpassed their goal. The goal was 1,000. They made over 5,000. And then I, got, I had to get cotton balled. So it was really a fun event, and so that also is on the website in the pictures. And it was I was in a wheelchair, and they're pushing me, and I had tape all around me, and cotton balls all everywhere. And so it was a lot of fun, and you could see how much fun the kids had by the pictures that we had. Um, another thing, the great thing that we just did yesterday was Mrs. Parker, the crazy woman that she is, and Miss Hubel took eight, um, almost. Um, 60, well over 60, because 58 were on the bus and 12 were driven by parents um, to the um, Camas Center and we were we swam and talk about amazing and I was sure everybody was going to sleep on the bus home, but no, they were wide awake and <laughs> excited about, about what they were doing. Um, so things that we're doing this week, our next, our, I talked about PBIS and our whole school award, our next one is um, tomorrow, and Friday, we're going to do um, Earth Day pudding cups, and they're going to have um, pudding cups. And then we, um, uh, so that's pretty exciting. We have um, the Idaho Shakespeare Festivals coming to Priest Lake, Idaho Hill, and Priest River Elementary on May 3rd. We also have an astronaut coming on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> and um, so we have our astronaut day. And we're not just doing a rocket. Dem Mr. Neck's not only doing a rocket demonstration that day. He's also going to do a drone demonstration. And so family, parents are invited to come that day um, and do that. Uh, let's see what else is going on. What we have our jump up day to sixth grade in um, May 19th. We um, are doing a Spartan race at the end of the year. It used to be called the foot race, um, but, and we're going to have an awards ceremony and so many more things going on at Priest River Elementary School. So there you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Lynn, what time does the um, astronaut visit? Because I've attended that um, before. We do, I think it's 9. nine? And then we okay. do a, an assembly in the, in, the auditor, in the gymnasium. And then it's very nice, it's very well done. Thank after you. my talks, right. and then and then we all go outside and then watch the events. I'm Shaner. I'm the special ed um, or special services director, and I've had the great pleasure to help Susie out at Idaho Hill Elementary and um, pretend to be principal. So, um, on top, I wanted to start with special services. Um, our special services numbers have increased by five students in the last month. Um, as you can see, I, I broke it down for you. Um, on, on the graph of where each the big population of students are. Um, and nothing's really changed. The thing, one thing, um, we had a wonderful, hard to fill position filled, and that person stayed for about a week and left us. And basically, what was communicated to me is we were asking too much of the person, we were asking her to cheat too many jobs. So um, we're back looking again, and um, so 
I think I've said it every month, how do we get these hard to fill positions? How do we fill them? How do we keep them? What are we gonna do? So um, we'll, we'll need to be thinking about that as, as we go on. What was the position title? It was a personal care nurse. And we're required to have that person? Yes. Correct. By law. By law. Mm -hmm. yes. So, um, you know, we there's other positions that we're required to have that we're still posting for, but we, so, but that was the Debbie Downer news. Um, let's move on to Idaho Hill, which is a, just a celebration in and of itself. It was, I am just so lucky to be able to go over there and spend some time in that school. It's awesome. Um, when I was there, they had several parents come and help improve. Um, they were working outside for Earth Day week, and it was it was just really really neat. The the kids are really nice. They have a routine going down. The staff is really good. Um, this has quite a few dates on it, but at the bottom, I wanted to highlight um, their spring fling is going to be May nineteenth, and um, I wanted to invite the board and everybody to attend. Mm -hmm. So, you guys have any questions? No. No? Okay. Thank you. I would only add on to oh, that, sorry. if I could. The student council, uh, had their service project for this year, they chose to gather uh, or to purchase things for the Priest River Women's Shelter. And they called the women's shelter to find out what they needed. Somebody had seen a post on Facebook where they were asking for size five diapers. They were in need right away. And one of the kids saw that, and so they brought it to the council, uh, discussed how to do a service project. Um, I made them, this was before I came to district office, but I made them call Forest River Ministries and ask to, about what they needed. So the kids came back with a list of uh, supplies. They needed clothing for the young children. They needed diapers and they needed blankets. So the student council put out uh, the information to the families and they collected a lot of things and I was gone when they delivered, but they did deliver to Priest River Ministries and, and I thought they really did a good job. And it looks like you're Kindergarten registration is on um, Wednesday, May 3rd. So Yes, district-wide, and I, I just made a note of that, and thank you, Lynn, for bringing that up, because um, my wondering is, that's usually always in the papers at, for the district, and I don't know who does that, but I'll make a note to make sure that that is published, because that is at all three elementary schools. It, 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 yeah. And Susie, it looks like um, Priest Rivers on the second, but um, Idaho Hill is on the third. Whatever yeah, that Wednesday Chris, is. Well, we're doing that because Chris has to have. Oh. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Well then, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Hall. I guess they're different. Traditionally, in the district, it's always been that first Wednesday in May. Yeah. Okay. But. Okay. Good. Any more? Oh. Thank you. Matt George, principal of the Priest River Lamada High School. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, just to run down through some things going on at the high school, you already heard about Akadeka and their, um, their success so far, and then they'll finish up on the 28th. <clears throat> some building-wide efforts uh, have been happening around the ISATs and reviewing for those. Um, elective courses are becoming an excellent extension of core learning. Uh, we have uh, forensic science classes, um, some of our uh, Got the name of the class. Dog on it. Uh, it was history class. History of rock and roll was one of them, and some uh, some other history classes as well. But they're starting to integrate multiple subjects into daily lessons, so our our electives are becoming more and more um, <clears throat> well-rounded that way. State added a graduation requirement of financial literacy. Uh, we've already have a t class that qualifies for that. It's called personal finance. So next year we'll be adding some sections to that to accommodate for next year's seniors. That is taught in our CTE. Um, classes and it does fall under the funding for CTE business as well. 
So uh, we're, we're set and ready to go for those new uh, graduation requirements. So no worries there. Uh, just talked about Akadeka. Don't know if she mentioned that or not, um, but uh, they're hoping for a top 20 finish this year as well. <clears throat> Staff has been focusing on continuing to define the Spartan way working on um, expectations in every class, every period, every day for staff and students. Um, our next steps are to create a school climate and culture that removes every excuse for failure, um, basically creating an environment where excellence um, knows no exceptions. Uh, create students uh, that are also the most competitive uh, in skills for the community and employers in the region. Uh, we really feel like uh, we have the right staff in place um, and we're, we're set, ready to go, where we can create a product that not only Priest River, uh, West Bonner County School District can be proud of, but all of North Idaho can be proud of. Um, and that, that's, our, that's our staff focus, is just creating that wonderful product um, that makes everybody proud. Um, continuous school improvement, our SWIFT tool, our, our school-wide improvement plan was approved by the state, and that will guide our work moving forward. Uh, just a reminder, that does align with the five-year strategic plan as well. Um, nothing in that tool uh, went sideways with the five-year strategic plan. Um, Mr. George, is that available to take a look at? Is it, at it, uh, it has to be posted on the district website. I'm not sure. Well, it had to be approved first, then it can be posted on the district website, so that would be the next step. And, and all that would be available to the public. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, it'll be either on the district or the school website. I can't remember which one it needs to be on. It'll, it'll be, be either on the school the or the district, okay. one of the two. So, um, achievement RTI data, uh, ran numbers um, last week, last Thursday, 65 out of 278 of our students, that's approximately 23% of our students have all A's and B's. So just shy of a quarter of our students have all A's and B's right now. That's, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, looking forward to uh, later this spring, in late May, heading down to triple play and knocking on wood, because I won't knock on wood because I'll make the mic freak out. but. Uh, Knock on wood, that, that, those numbers come up a little bit uh, before we head down. I've budgeted for uh, just over 100 students uh, to go down. So, um, <clears throat> ISATs, English uh, Language Arts is this week. Uh, science is next week. Math will be the, the following week. Uh, scores, uh, looked on the website today. Scores should be available 10 days after students complete the testing. So we'll know pretty quickly this year what the scores are. Uh, sophomores, uh, as you recall, they can uh, take it this year, and if they, if they take it and are proficient or advanced, they get to bank those scores. They're done taking ISATs in that subject for the rest of their high school, which is really cool incentive for them. But we tried to log them in on Monday, and uh, there was a glitch somewhere, but our testing coordinator for the district is working with the state to figure that glitch out. So um, she's, on, she's all over that. So they'll still possibly get a chance to do it? Uh, not possibly. That we, we will make it. Okay. Happen. Yeah, <laughs> we will make it happen. Okay. So yeah, that that's way too big of an incentive for our kids. Yeah. So yeah. Um, attendance enrollment as of 4-10, we had 278 students, 76 freshmen, 88 sophomores, 60 juniors, and 54 seniors. Um, spring sports are in full swing. Yes, that pun was intended because of golf, baseball, softball. Um, dad joke, sorry. Uh, boys and girls track are looking like they're going to be district favorites. They had a giant runaway win in the only league meet of the, of the year so far. So we're uh, hoping to send quite a few kids to state in that. Our home invite is this Saturday. It's uh, like 14 schools. It's a giant meet. Um, if, you have, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, come by the stadium. And it's a lot of fun to watch, watch our kids. Uh, baseball and softball are young, but they're exciting to watch. They just had a baseball at a home game today uh, versus Timberlake. Golf, the boys team is looking uh, to return to state this year. I, they have most of their kids returning, and so uh, they, the boys team is looking pretty strong. Uh, not, there is not a girls team, but we have some individuals that are playing quite well. Um, and some really awesome, cool news, we had three athletes that, were, um, that received awards lately. Uh, Matthias McLean uh, was uh, from the North Idaho Hall of Fame, uh, was, was honored with the Athlete of the Year Award. For, for this year, which is really, really a cool honor. Um, and then Luke Butler and Allison Button, but Bert, Bert, Burton, Allison Burton also were awarded at the, uh, with the Hagadon, yeah, the Hagadon um, um, High Character Award. So the, uh, the High Character Award is, uh, is actually a pretty cool honor because if you, know, if you know Luke and Allison, 
um, you understand why uh, they received the high character award. They are athletes of extremely high character as well. But so three athletes getting some pretty cool awards um, uh, this year, th this year as well. Our parent advisory council. Uh, we've been partnering with the junior high, <coughs> working on uh, cell phones, dress code, and then we'll move into bullying harassment, and then uh, if time allows, before school year's out, um, any other issues that come up. The next few months, uh, just for the board's heads up, coming your way. I'll be putting on the agenda graduation requirement revisions to match a seven-day period uh, for next year and uh, any new graduation requirements. Hopefully the state doesn't send us any curveballs before June. Um, and then overhaul the student handbook, including some dress codes, cell phone, the things we were talking about with the Parent Advisory Council and um, those types of things. Um, working on developing a new master schedule to get students registered for classes next year, hopefully before the school year is out. So. Yeah. Didn't okay. we have several students that also did like best in season and um, there was a couple of categories I saw an email on. Yeah, there, there were some that were nominated for, for best in season. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it looked like we had six or seven. I think. There were five. Okay. Five, yeah. uh, one was, uh, Mc, I always get his name, I'm going to try to get it correct, correct. McLeagtig was one uh, yeah. in wrestling was one as well. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so one of uh, Thank you, Matt. I want to acknowledge that there's two parents of those students that you identified that are yeah, in the room. They are. Mm -hmm. Sarah Butler and actually Carlin. They so, are. So he didn't pronounce her name right. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, yeah, and, and actually, Ms. B uh, Ms. Burton is heading down to. Um, <laughs> Barton, Barton. Barton is heading down. See, once it's in my head, uh, Ms. Barton is heading down with another student, Miss um, um, uh, Humphrey, heading down to the ISHA um, Sportsmanship Conference tomorrow at Lake City High School as well. So we have two junior representatives heading down. Good. Is that it? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys so much. Miss anybody? Any other directors? None. Okay. Perfect. Uh, what's that? Um, next is um, uh, public comments on the agenda. It looks like all the comments um, are non-agenda items, so those will be brought up later in the meeting. And yours, is yours is bills. Okay. Yours is regarding discussions of the levy you've already had, so <coughs> Well, it's not on this current agenda, but it's you've not. You've already talked about it, brought it up. Your discussions regarding the levy, so that makes it on the agenda. Fair enough. Okay. So, levy, levy items then are... It's not. It's not on the agenda. It's not. Right. So yeah, we. It's regarding stuff that's on the agenda. It's uh, specific big. agenda mm -hmm. items. They're not. That's not an agenda item. With your with your permission, uh, Chairman. Please. Uh, order. Please. Yes. With your permission, um, Chairman Rutledge, Principal Lucky, and board members. This is, I'm addressing not the levy itself, but the tone being taken to promote the levy. Shrill voices from self-proclaimed lovers are again engaged in emotionally charged rants. Where Christ is mentioned, but what is exemplified is the Manichaean division between good and evil, indiscriminately assigning lover and hater status with a litmus test based on one how one votes on the levy. This page, which I don't have time to read, is a partial list of volunteer contributions to education, evidence of a loving and generous community. These people who are called haters support the public system with their tax dollars. Where's the hate? The hate is in the polarizing tone that dismisses respectful debate while it gives tacit permission for all kinds of criminal behaviors trespassing onto private property with st and stealing signs, spreading slander and false witness, 
making death threats to board members, and more. Worst of all is the tonal insinuation to children and to teachers that if the levy fails, it means that our community hates them. With today's children so vulnerable to negativity to even suggest to them that they are hated is more than mean. It's perilous. Emotional blackmail and bullying tactics aren't allowed in our schools, are they? And it's, not, it's hypocritical for adults to use such ploys. For the most perfect description of love, let us defer not to a third century heretic, but rather to the apostle St. Paul and set our tone accordingly. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act disgracefully. It does not seek its own benefit. It is not provoked. It does not keep an account of a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It keeps every confidence. It believes in all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Since we've already talked in the levy, I have two other people concerned with the levy. For future reference, anything that is not on the agenda, the agenda means agenda items, okay, that are specifically listed on the agenda. That's, that's the whole idea behind that. To your point, the non-agenda items that weren't on here, that would be under the um, non-agenda items for public comment. But since we're already gone down that path, the next person to speak on the levy is Kathy Nash. I'd like to just wait until the end. Okay. okay. Perfect. Uh, Dell. Hi, my name is Dell Hungerford, and I'm an educator, and I've always voted for every levy. This year, I am considering not. And part of that is is I've researched and spent a lot of time looking at what's going on in the district. I recognize that all businesses and organizations, when there's things going on, you have to look at the inside. You have to look at what's going on within the organization itself. And what I'm seeing, there's some staff things that need to be addressed, of which I've sent you guys a bunch of that stuff and we'll send you more. As I see the trustees' ability to deal with various issues, this determines one way I vote for the levy or not. Then I'm looking at some of the things that were just mentioned before. Children copy the behavior of adults around them. We are supposed to be a model of integrity for them to follow. We have a case of monkey see, monkey do, where the root issue in the children's behavior is that kids are modeling us. They're modeling what we do, and several things have already been brought up. Bullying, harassment, as mentioned by Mr. George, was one of them. Some district examples of things that I've seen. A picture on the West Bonner County School District with the board on fire in a dumpster. Okay, Facebook petition against the four-day school week with lots of nasty comments. People coming to board meetings and treating others with disrespect when they speak to the board. That's already been mentioned tonight too. Like, shame on you and the comments like that. Kids are listening. Inappropriate and attacking comments on social media. Solutions. By accepting others, whether you agree with them or not, is important. In order to change the behavior issues in this school, it must start with us. We need to let go of the belief that this is the way we've always done it, because clearly it's not working. We can agree to disagree with respect and dignity without judging others' comments and the way we believe. Are we willing to change the culture of our community? If so, our school district will see positive change, but it starts with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Maureen Patterson. Good evening, I'm Maureen Patterson. Um, and if you're willing to pray with me, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we've had. We thank you for all of the blessings that you give us. Bless this meeting tonight. May our hearts and our minds be given, be yours, and, and follow your holy will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, the reason I said bills is because I was 
hoping to ask if uh, the Wells Fa Fargo bills could be itemized so that it's better transparency. Also, I sent two um, graphs that showed that they were verified by the State Department of Education and by the IdahoSchools.org. And the first one shows how our um, schools and the other five surrounding districts, um, the other five surrounding districts are, uh, have ISAP proficiency scores higher than ours, as well as graduation rates higher than ours. Ours, the, ours are the lowest. Also, we are spending $3,000 more than any of the other five districts. The second graph verifies that there has been in the last 10 years a 106% increase in revenue that the state has sent school districts. And in this last year, it will be 16% greater. My concern is that that wasn't really addressed very well in, in talking about the levy and what you needed. Um, also, there was excess revenue over the 3.4 million levy for the last two years um, because of the valuation of houses went up and so you did get an excess and I don't know what that was spent on. Um, unfor unfortunately, uh, this increase of 38%, it's done, it's, it's okay. Up. Okay. Um, just more accountability and transparency, please. Okay. Excuse me, Maureen, did you say you emailed us a graph? She just did. Okay. Just today. Two okay. graphs. Yep. This afternoon. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, the rest of the public comments will be uh, on non-agenda items. Uh, next, uh, I need a motion to uh, go to the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to go to the consent agenda. Trustee so Paul um, makes a motion. I make a second. Uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds. Um, any comments? Not at this time. No. Uh, I received questions from Trustee Brown. Your questions that you mm -hmm. sent? Yes, she has them. Okay. Yes. So the question was the uh, Priest River City and an account was used and there was zero and then the same thing happened with an expenditure from Bighorn uh, an account was itemized on that bill and it shows a zero and that is because there were two accounts that were being used to satisfy that expenditure so one of the accounts got zeroed out it was fully exhausted or expensed and um, that is what you are seeing. The uh, transportation in lieu, um, the question, and Trustee Brown, it's easier for me just to read the question. Are you okay with that? Oh, it's fine. Okay. Uh, so the question is, trust, uh, transportation in lieu, I just want to be sure we are verifying each month before payment is made that these students have not been removed from the bus due to behavioral issues. Uh, the answer to that is, uh, students have to be eligible to ride in order to receive in lieu or for their parents to receive in lieu or parents or guardians, excuse me, receive in lieu dollars. Um, and then I double checked with our accounts payable and that's also reconciled with looking at the um, attendance reports. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure we weren't having to pay for, you know. Absolutely. Uh, the, the travel um, I have the purchase orders for that and the invoices, uh, the same with the, all of the rest, you'll be able to clearly see. Are there any other specific questions regarding? Um, yeah, the, uh, NeoPost Advance, is that a machine that we bought? It's a payment to a machine. So we use the postage machine <coughs> so, through a machine. Okay. So we pay them five hundred a month, but then we also pay postage somewhere else. Oh yeah, right here, the leasing company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you.
good? Yeah, I'm good. Right okay. Now. Okay, you, so that's on the. Thank you for asking. Um, <coughs> has everyone had a chance to read the minutes? Yes, for me then. Yeah. Okay. A, anything on the consent agenda that that we need to address? No, no, okay. I don't have anything else. Okay, all those in favor of the consent agenda, uh, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Okay, old business. Second reading of policy, we struck the all the policies except 3525. That will be the second reading of policy 3525. And we kept that basically the same, correct? Correct. Yes. That was the one, and all ended that uh, brief last month was updated for, and it's updated every year by the long list of provisions. Yeah. So we'll update again next year. And it was just, I mean, it was minimal that you did. We kept the same. It was just not posted, but for people who want to, it was posted last time, but correct. this time it wasn't, it wasn't posted yeah, this yeah. time. So that people know where to make, to find it. There were no changes on it. Yeah. So people. No, not from last month, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we added, we added three words. So we added three words. To make a motion to bring it to the table? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion to bring, um, sorry, policy 3525 immuni immunization requirements to the table. I second that. Okay. So that we can have that discussion, do it officially. So, uh, do, are you, Stephanie, do you bring that up or? Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't in my pile. No, it wasn't in mine. No, it, but but it was less. Basically, that's. I've not changed it at it all. It's not changed, and it was basically okay. did the same as last month. And I remember that we went. It's it was posted in March to be able to see it if mm -hmm. we needed to. It's nice to have it posted with our meetings, but that's where. We will make sure it's reposted in the future. Okay. Thank you. And it was just getting rid of the. Really getting rid of one column and some things right, that weren't relevant. Two columns, and the state moved it down to two columns. And it was easy to finish you know, for a junior high. Yeah, this is what's basic. Let's see. So this shows the tracked changes. Correct. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. The second reading of um, the 3525. Okay, Trustee Hall makes a motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Brown um, seconds that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. The policy is uh, adopted. Okay. Action item. Um, we need a motion to consideration and approval of interim superintendent contract. I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve, but I haven't seen the contract. I have not, yes. I'd like to see I it. I haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. Okay. Let me pull it up. It's posted. It is posted now? Yes. It okay. wasn't posted before. Okay. Trust, Trustee Hall makes a motion to uh, consider and approve um, interim superintendent contract. Mm -hmm. Vice Chair it. Brown seconds it. As we can see it. Um, I, I know that it's important to get it done, but I would make a motion to table it until our work session, have it as an action item on our work session next week. Hopefully it wouldn't take long rather than wait till our month. I agree with you. You know, wait out another month if yeah. that's possible. Um, I mean, it would be nice to read it. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, Chair Rutledge, you've read it, but um, and we could read it now. But it's like take five minutes to read it now if we want. To, you know, take a couple of minutes to read it now. What? The only points that are different from this contract, in comparison, would be the title instead of just superintendent contract. It's interim superintendent, so it's a contract for the remainder of this year. That means that everything within. Um, would be prorated. So then the next part that's going to be changed is the name. So we use a pretty standard contract as provided by the state of Idaho um, and also um, similar to all of the contracts that have gone through this office. So we have 
um, Ms. Lucky's name, and then the amount, and then um, everything else is a is a mirror of the previous contract, with those two exceptions. Okay. Then the addendum is also also mirrored, and I can pull that up on the screen. And this one, um, stepping to clarify, this interim contract um, uh, is um, based on, I mean, this one, um, Jackie, the superintendent, former Superintendent Branham's was, um, dollar amount was based on her, also based on her experience as a superintendent, correct? So this is a little bit of a different rate. Uh, um, correct. Okay, so this is not the same. This is a, because um, Superintendent Branham, former Superintendent Branham was based on, I think, 13 years of being a superintendent. This would be different. I think you're right. So. And, and I'd like to actually be able to read it. Right. Okay, so. The, the motion on the table is to table this until our work session. Yeah, the first six. I think it is. Work session next week. Okay, but yeah. we can't then. It's a work session. It's. It, can we? We can. We're, we have enough time to post an action item on that. You have enough meeting we to post it a, as a special meeting. A special meeting like. right okay. at the front, just up front. To okay, do so. It um, Trustee Hall makes a motion to table. Trustee Brown, or Vice Chair Brown, second set of motion. All those in favor of tabling till our next our um, special meeting. Meetings. April 26. April 26th. Uh, in favor of tabling this until April 26th, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, uh, tabling it till the April 26th working session. And this is no reflection on interim superintendent. It's just doing our due diligence of being able to read it. I want to make sure that we're reading it and not, um, you know, being able to look at it. Okay. I think it's fine, but I just, it's, it, we should be in the practice of reading okay. it. Um, next, I need a motion to consider consideration and approval of Under Armour Uniform Agreement. I'll make, I'll make, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. Okay, Vice Chair Brown makes a motion to consideration and approval of Under Armour Uniform Agreement. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Trustee Hall seconds. Um, can you bring that up, please? I'd love to have a little bit more explanation on this. Yes, isn't item B the consideration and approval of bus specification? I thought we scratched that one, didn't we? No, the one that was scratched is the budget. The bus. Mm -hmm. Bus budget. But the, the Under, yeah. Arm, Under Armour uniform agreement wasn't. Was that supposed to be scratched as well? No. No, we no. had it in the. No. <laughs> we had it in the packet. No, we have our young man here. He's like, I'm ready to talk. <laughs> and we've also got it in the packet. So yeah. But we do have now the bus. We we do Was have the bus specification. That's the old one I provided too. Um, oh. uh, Chair Rutledge, yes, we mm -hmm. do have the school bus specification posted, and I know I'm afraid that Virginia and. Daryl may be here to talk about that, but we really haven't. Again, it was posted late, so we didn't have time to look at that. What are, what are we talking about? Um, I think Steffi, we're scratching that bus. We're scratching the bus specification. Is how how timely is that? Are we supposed to be looking at that? Is there a time sensitive manner to that? Do we need to put that one on next week? Uh, that but, I do not know. Because uh, that would be a question for. Uh, so the it, it takes a year to get a bus, and it has to be within the fiscal year. So last year's bus is coming next month for part of June. So the quicker we get it, the quicker we get it, so we can close out the year. So generally speaking, April is when we put that specifications in, and we're not. That's not actually to go out to bid yet. That's just for you to prove the specifications for the bus. And just so you know, we put a specification in there for a diesel bus and a gas bus because of the cost difference. So just to kind of give us some leeway on um, cost savings, basically. So. 
there's two specifications in there. Okay, so and, let me... And, and just for explanation, what we found was that, that West Bonner was not using a generic bid. They were using a vendor-specific bid in the past. So when they would ship that out, you may not have had all three vendors in the state bid on those buses because it was, it was specific to one vendor. So um, the state actually has a model generic class, and all you do is go in there and add your little details to it, and then it's generic and it's ready to go in the mail. Okay. And, and you have two bids. You'll have one, they'll, they'll look the same, the cover page will look the same, but when you get into the meat of it, like on the second page, one will say diesel, say the size, and the other one will say gas, and say the size. Okay, the only difference. For the, for the record, we need to bring this up. Um, yeah. I need to amend the, uh, what's on the floor. Uh, I'll make a motion to amend what's on the floor and bring back just for briefly the consideration approval of bus specifications out for bid for 2023-2024. Um, their documents were added late. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, so Trustee Hall makes a motion to uh, consider consideration approval of bus specification out for bid for 2023-24. And uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds that, and we've just heard the discussion. What else do we need to discuss on this? To that's it. I guess do we? I mean, are we? Do we vote on allowing that to go forward, or do we need to look at it? If do, if we do need to look at it and read it, if people need to look at it and read it further, like we did the interim of the contracts, then I hate to say it, I would put it briefly on this, make a special meeting, and add this one to that next week, and not wait until May it to go out to bid because there's a time sensitive manner to this okay so yeah. can do it um so there's a motion on the floor to table this until the next special meeting which would be in in april 6 26. 26. that's going to turn into a big meeting <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. um okay do, do i have a second i'll second that okay so the motion is to table this until it's um April 26th mm -hmm. and a second. The, the motion was by Trustee Hall, um, second by Vice Chair Brown. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that's tabled until April 26th for further review. And I, I guess for clarification, is that going to be just started at 5 p.m.? Our work session was going to start at 5. Do we want to do our work session then do the special meeting after we did 6 briefly and just sort of have a short special meeting? Yes. Did you catch that? Okay. Okay, um, now. I will make a motion to bring back consideration approval of Under Armour Uniform Agreement again. Okay. And I'll second that again. Trustee Hall brings uh, to the floor consideration and approval of Under Armour Uniform Agreement. Uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds that. Um, do we have discussion? Okay. He's here to Still yeah, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, uh, I'm getting on Chris Taylor, the AD at the high school. So all this is, is a lot of high schools do this. Um, all it is is a contract with Under Armour. Um, there's nothing binding about it. Like if we break it, it's kind of more like they dump us. Like, because they're giving us a whole bunch of benefits here. We get 40% off anything we buy that's Under Armour. Um, so jerseys, shoes, shirts, uh, warm-ups, anything Under Armour at all, we get 40% off. They also give us 3000 a year in free Under Armour gear. Okay, so that could be warm-ups for the cheer team, whatever, you know, whatever it is we decide to spend that money on. Um, the first year it's actually $4,500, but 3000 a year for five years. Um, the only thing we have to do is, uh, it's basically incentivized that we buy Under Armour stuff. We already buy this stuff for our kids every year. It's part of the levy, uh, 10000 a year for jerseys. And it's a rotate. It's a rotation of when we buy it. So this coming year, volleyball, girls <coughs> soccer, boys soccer. So they've already got their Under Armour gear picked out. They're gonna buy it anyway. With this right here, we get a 40% discount plus all the kickbacks plus everything else. And <clears throat> the cool part on that is they brand our school, so we get like Under Armour signs, and the kids all know we're we're an Under Armour school. And it's kind of just a cool thing to say. It builds excitement, and energy with our kids. So take pride in that we're an Under Armour school, even though it, you know, there's nothing 
that crazy about it. It's not a huge sponsorship or anything like that. But they do these with lots of schools. I believe um, there's some schools in the area that have these Adidas, Nike, Under Armour. Um, but this was the best one for us by far. So, so we're getting 40% off, but mm -hmm. where's our price point? I mean, are they 10% higher than somebody mm -hmm. else? 50 yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good point, right? There's price points for all different ones. Nike is always the most expensive, right? Um, mm -hmm. Under Armour is not the most. It's right up there. You can buy the cheapest stuff, but a lot of times that stuff falls apart so quick, and we have to make it last not four years, even though that's the rotation. Think about it. Once we buy new ones, they become JV jerseys. So we're making these jerseys last eight to 10 years. So we do have to buy a little bit high quality stuff. Um, not high quality, but you know, in that range. So um, no, it, even with the 40% discount, really where the discount takes place is um, shoes, right? For our kids, right? We're gonna buy these jerseys no matter what, but for our kids, they have to go buy $60 cleats. Well, we get 40% off those cleats if they buy it through us. Um, so yeah, the jersey wise, we're not saving a whole bunch of money, right? But where we are saving money is the 3,000 we get every year that we can, oh hey, the volleyball team needs new warm ups or whatever it is. Like this year, let's use the 3,000 for this, right? So that's where we save money. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the Under Armour Uniform Agreement. I second that. Okay, Trustee Barton makes a motion to approve the um, uh, Under Armour uniform agreement and vice chair brown second sat all those in favor aye aye those opposed okay the motion carries awesome thank, thank you, guys. you appreciate it <clears throat> next uh consideration and approval of board meeting change of venue so like bring oh. change of venue to, to the, the table to the table okay. oh sorry vice chair brown brings the Consideration and approval of board meeting change of venue. I second. Okay, uh, Trustee Brown or Hall second set. Um, discussion. Um, we did. We might um, maybe. Who's good? Who's the best person? This is um, Susie. Maybe Officer Davis um, could speak to that. Um, so with the amazing support that the school board is getting lately. Um, the other night we had 130, 150 people in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if something would have happened, I mean, I wasn't willing to kick people out. I wanted them to be involved in, in our schools, mm -hmm. right? Um, so with that, if something would have happened, um, somebody would have had a seizure, somebody would maybe had a heart attack or something, I mean, I can get all those people out of here and get EMS in here. How can I do that properly? Yeah. Um, so with that, we need to have a little bit bigger venue. Um, the high school cafeteria works really well. The auditorium works really well. Um, and I think that we'd get more buy-in from the community if we start going to our schools. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I will mention is safety and security. Absolutely. Um, you, know, you cannot bring a gun into a school building, but this is a district office. We don't teach kids here. So there will be no guns allowed in the schools here. I really can't say that. Right. So. Okay. No. Safety and security-wise. Okay, so. I think um, we have to use our schools. And it gives us bigger bathrooms. We have multiple bathrooms in the schools instead of one. We have a lot more chairs and seating, and people can pull it up. So okay. I guess my question is on the different venues, and I don't disagree, but is being able to stream the meetings, um, are we going to be able to move around? And I guess, it, can the high school cafeteria do that? I mean, I'm just wondering how that's going to work. Uh, it'll take a little bit of changes on my part, but okay. maybe not. Okay. What about the middle school? We have white there. What about the junior high cafeteria? Because there's not any events that go on in there that we know of. It's your not. auditorium's gonna have events, your high school's gonna have events mm -hmm. that we would have to work around, but we might be able to, where's Middles Junior or I'm not here today. Amber's not here. Amber's not here. I, so. We'd have to ask Ron, I'm not sure, when, when we were having the conversation, because we had so many people at the last board meeting that couldn't even get in, mm -hmm. um, and then because of our occupancy load in the building, um, we did talk about the 
cafeteria because we at the high school because we have used that for numerous presentations and have a screen and we also everything. use the library and it's still quite a bit bigger than this. Well, and the other thing is, that, yeah. I mean, the, the annex that we use for the three C's in December, um, it didn't, the images didn't show up on the screen that well. That would be my only concern about right. that one. Correct. So um, I know that May, we've already, we're already in a school because we're at the Priest Lake Elementary School mm -hmm. for May right. um, meeting. And that will be hard to internet is yeah. So does that mean like if we have our work sessions, can we still have our work sessions here? Or do we have to well, Yeah, I would say the work I sessions session. are fine here. Okay. Yeah. I would think so. you we've never you've never overcrowded your work sessions yeah. today. But then I'm sorry to interrupt, but then how are we going to get if we have a work session that precedes a meeting, how mm -hmm. are we gonna get from point A to point B to oh, maybe we're six okay. minutes late? Well, so well, then we do the work sessions the night of the board meetings. Then we do the work sessions wherever the board meeting is taking place. Yeah, that'll okay. be on the seventeenth. Yeah. So, just so, so the consistency is probably going to be more transparent than moving around, though, mm -hmm. so that all of our our community knows. Okay, now we're all moving the board meetings, the um, the work sessions. They'll all be in the same spot. And then that way we don't get confused on where they're going to be or anyone else has questions. So we probably need to find a spot that we can have them consistently at from <coughs> for the rest of the year. And I know Susie was thinking, um, it was thinking that the priest, um, the Lamana High School cafeteria for the three C's, and maybe we just because the, there's not much longer for at least till the end of the school year. Maybe except for next month, which was already advertised or noticed that it was going to be at the lake. So that one's already taken care of, and then we're into June. Mm -hmm. So we're basically, um, you know, almost there. You know, we're then, then we can see whether it's the junior high or the junior, when we get into the summer, we may not have as, who knows if we're going to have as many people during those summer months of board meetings. So what would be the easiest one? If we're getting into summer, then we probably need to coordinate with Ken to figure out which of the facilities is right. not going to be occupied. Occupied, and I don't know from a board clerk, you know, for Steffi being the former board clerk, um, are we going to? I mean, we were supposed to notice at the beginning of January where we were going to have our venues, so we're switching our venues. So I, I did attach the policy to this. I, excuse me. I didn't mean to just butt in. Yeah. No, go ahead. I did attach the policy to this discussion item. Um, it's policy 1500. Mm -hmm. And it is mentioned or reaffirmed in the annual board meeting. But taking a look at, here, let me download it. So, so what's pulled up on the screen right now, though, is the Priest River Junior High Facility Use Calendar. Um, the principal makes sure that that's that's up there, which is awesome. Um, but I'm pulling up the policy right now. So this Google Doc I just got from right there. Oops. And here's the policy. So. I think it's under the annual. It's the regular meetings. So unless otherwise specified. So that's why you have the opportunity to discuss it in open meeting for transparency right now to specify uh, changing your regular meetings. You could also go through a board policy review of this. Um, you have options. Okay, well, we're not violating. No, this shows that you're not violating anything yeah. by discussing it right now or by making a decision to change venues for the time being, mm -hmm. especially due to safety that Sergeant Davis has highlighted. And well, I, that's to say the safety <clears throat> has to be taken first. Okay, so I guess I would ask Mr. George what would, what would be the impact on the high school if, we, if the board met the third Wednesday of each month in the cafeteria 
the, the only issue uh, for the cafeteria and board meetings would be in the wintertime during uh, mm -hmm. during basketball practices. We have to stagger back basketball practices late and early because of facilities. Uh, we could work. We could find a workaround. There are other there are other gyms in the district, and we could we could uh, go to five o'clock and then have another have that late practice be another facility like the elementary school. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the library? The library is a little little tighter. It's tight in there when you have faculty meetings of about okay. twenty five to thirty people. It's a little tighter in there. Um, but we have we have had our entire district um, first day in the high school cafeteria before. Okay, mm -hmm. I just was want to be mindful of any impact on, mm -hmm. on and your I, school. And we, we, we can work we can work around that. <coughs> we're talking in the winter sports season. Or maybe we're talking three meetings, so it's three days. Uh, and we, we could always schedule teams away that day. Um, and, and okay. Sort of things. And what about, oh, I'm sorry, what about games? What about um, club watch. practices? All those other things that happen after hours, those are? We can just open it up those, those three days and then just make sure the gym is empty. And we aren't really meeting only three days. Well, well, the other thing is we got to remember we we set our calendar January first or at the January meeting. So all we're concerned about right now is going from May's meeting is already taken care of at the Priest Lake Elementary. So we're looking at June through December. That's those are the meetings that we're looking at. Yeah. The other thing in the middle of the summer, as I said, I would double check with Ken, make sure that you know he's got his team all. He may be doing the floors, he may be stripping it. We may not want to be in whichever building he is doing. So I think besides checking with the admin, um, principal, we need to check with him, especially in the summertime. Once we're back up and running, that's another issue. Okay, so am I to understand that once we make this decision, we move to that location, or do we ever use this as a fallback position? I think you could use this as a fallback position. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're just looking, still going to be limited to three more people here because the fire marshal came in and said okay. yeah. that we violated that at our last meeting. So okay. Um, so we definitely need to find another. So we have a little bit of. Do we want to look at sort of the other options and then in the May meeting, which mm -hmm. where we're already covered, mm -hmm. make sort of figure out what the rest yes. of it. Yeah, we're just okay. So it. sorry to table it again, but. <laughs> Okay. Um, answer so, some other questions first, and then you know, I guess it would be: Can we? How is there a place that's easier to stream that still accommodates us that has a screen so we can see um, people right. can see that? So, mm -hmm. so do I hear we tabled this to answer yeah. these questions? I make a motion to table the consideration of meeting meeting the board meeting until we answer. And, yeah. Other questions. Okay. And I would um, suggest tabling it to the May 17th meeting or the May, yeah. to yeah, the May monthly mean. meeting. Yeah. Um, okay. we don't, I don't think it's as, I mean, it's, it would be more urgent if we weren't already having right, the school thing the next Okay, month. Vice Chair Brown makes a motion to table moving the venue, uh, board meeting change of venue until the May 17th meeting to Trustee Hall seconds that. Mm -hmm. yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, so we're tabling that until May 17th. But thank you for bringing it up. I mean, I think it's a, you know, it's important for that consideration. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda, um, I, need a, I need a motion for policy 7400 P3. First read. I'll make a motion to bring policy 7400P3 um, to the table, and that is the financial management for financial management. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Trustee Hall makes a motion for to bring policy 7400P3 to the floor. Vice Chair Brown seconds. Uh, comments? Is there an explanation that um, maybe goes with this a little bit? Yes. Um, so this is this is probably going to be one of the most straightforward policies that you, you ever see. So in our policies on the district website, you'll see a 7400 P1, P2, P4. No P3. This P3 addresses specifically food service. So
So we had a food service monitoring um, slash audit and this policy was not on our district website and was noted in that audit. And so per corrective action plan, um, our district needs to adopt such policy. I will make a motion to a, um, to approve the first reading of policy 7400P3. Okay. Um, I have a question. Our committee did not read this policy, so. No, this policy just came out of the financial from the business office, well, that's all. So if it needs to be routed through the policy committee, absolutely. Um, that, must have, that was an oversight on my part. Um, I'm used to bringing forward recommendations. I think, I mean, we've, we've gotten backlogged on policies and I know there are more policies coming forward with ISBA. If this is pretty straightforward, I'd like to go ahead and um, make a motion to approve the first reading. I'll second that. Okay. Who's been a first uh, to accept the policy 7400P3 by Trustee Paul? Second by uh, Trustee Barton. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? I'm just going to abstain because I haven't had a chance to read through it first, so I don't know what I'm approving. Okay. I, I read it. I, I'm going to approve it. Okay. We have a second read as well. This is just the first read. Yeah. Okay, the motion carries. The policy passes the first read. Uh, did Trustee or Vice Chair Brown nay or abstain? Abstain. 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 Sorry. And then for guidance, um, I certainly don't want to put the board or myself in this position again. Do all policies need to be routed through the policy committee? Yes, please. I, yes, please. Okay, um, absolutely. Actually, excuse me, I think that is up to the superintendent. The procedure goes through is the oh, superintendent's, okay. uh, it, it's the call of the superintendent. So I think that we need to look at okay, that. That enough. was not, that's not our call on that one. I'm sorry. Correct, I'll stand corrected. All right, um, was that? okay, next uh, I need a motion for policy 3265, student owned electric communication devices to bring to the floor. I'll make a recommendation. Um, I'll make a motion to bring the 3265 student owned electronic communication devices to the floor. Okay, Trustee Hall makes it first. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Vice Chair Brown seconds bringing 3265 student owned electric, electronic communication devices to the floor. Discussion? Um, yeah, I don't so like. This one's pretty easy. So we're looking at cell phone policy. The only change in this policy is that we remove the word cell phones from this policy. Because with the parent council that Principal George and Principal Williams are headed up that happened beyond, we're keeping the cell phone discussion or cell phone rules in the handbooks. Because cell phones are obviously a big issue in our schools and everything. So on this policy, the word cell phone is taken out and all the other like tab, tablets are in there. And the cell phone, which is separate, which will be approved when you guys approve the handbooks, will be done in that time. So this one's really easy. You just okay. put cell phones out. But cell phone policy is being redone. I think we have an answer on that. We will see that when we send a handbook through, or when the principal send a handbook through. Okay. That's all. Do we okay. have what was struck out? It would have been, you know, I'm not sure the track changes on this one. It would have been when they listed it, it was, uh, Third line down. Yeah. You know, right. so I had tablet e readers. Right. And I, I apologize. I did not send track changes to the superintendent. Took the cell third phones line. Out. I okay. Cell phones on that. Okay. Perfect. I make a motion that we approve policy, the first read of policy 3265, student owned electronic communication devices. And I'll second that. Okay. Trustee Barton makes a motion to accept uh, edits to the policy of. Uh, Student owned electronic <coughs> devices, communication or communication devices. Trustee Hall seconds of said policy. Is all those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the policy is approved by the first reading. 
Okay, yeah. policy 30, 3340P. Do I have a motion to bring to the table policy 3340P, corrective actions and punishment for students with disabilities? I'll make a motion to bring policy 3340P, corrective actions and punishment for students with disabilities to the table. Okay, Trustee Hall makes a motion. I'll second that. Uh, Trustee uh, Vice Chair um, Brown seconds the motion. Any discussion? So if I may, I, I think I can mail at least two today. We just got come back, come back, comments, I can't talk today, back from Trustee Hall today. So if we could table us next month so we can review those comments and get all those answers, I would prefer that. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not posted. So um, I would Correct. make a motion to table it to the main meeting um, and with um, for the first read. I'll second that. Okay, so Trustee Hall uh, makes a motion to table policy 3340P, corrective actions and punishment for Thank students you. with disabilities. Trustee Barton seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that is tabled to the May 17th meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, policy three question, question mark question mark question yeah. mark. I'll make a motion to bring policy three question mark question mark question mark to the table and it's not posted. Okay, Trustee My, Hall and makes a I'll motion to bring to the table. Uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds it. So I would, I did. I think at one point it showed up and then it was pulled. But I would make a motion that this again be tabled. Um, this is with these biological, this is the biological sex poli the policy, it's the board policy on biological sex, is that one? I did contact ISBA um, because I figured that because of some of the law case um, lawsuits that are happening in the legislature that is just come down, they are, just to give you a heads up, they are working on a policy related to this that is going to be viewed by their attorneys in putting it together. Um, so um, my concern on this is I would want our attorneys to review this current policy just to make sure, because this is kind of, um, just to make sure there's it, we're not opening ourselves up to um, lawsuit one way or the other. And so that's, I would either table it or wait and see, because they are going to do it in their spring policy release, is what the, I was told today. ISBA is going to address this. And I think they're going to they're gonna address it, but there's also you know, all the different lawsuits and everything, and the new legislation related to biological sex. I think they're going to, they're actually going to come up, they're working on a policy for this one that will be part of their spring release. That, okay. that was my understanding that uh, with all the changes that the, with the legislature this session, then with this specific policy, that's why it doesn't have a number attached, why it was question mark, because there isn't a policy to refer to. And they were checking with attorneys to understand the law mm -hmm. that was passed so that then the policies could be written. Okay. And, and I mean, then we could compare this one against that one and see see how the two line, line okay. up. With, um, and that was my intent. In fact, I talked to Trustee Rival last week. I said it was coming, but we wanted to see what the state did first yeah. for obvious reasons. And okay. I didn't realize that three questions first one was that that policy. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have a title. There was nothing when we yeah. were given it. I understood. Yeah. I mean, I have a draft that was bad. I just didn't realize what it was. Okay. So, I would make a motion to wait till, this, till ISBA releases theirs, and we can review this policy. You know what's been drafted against that one, and see see if it works. Okay. I'll so that. the motion on the floor is trust Trustee Hall uh, moves to table call policy three question mark question mark question mark <laughs> until um, uh, ISBA releases said policy. Uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. The policy is tabled until ISBA uh, writes their policy. And uh, hopefully that, I mean, I understood but it would probably be this group of this spring and they're trying to get that okay. done in somewhat of a timely manner. Okay. So, uh, next is superintendent report. Can I just do it from here? Do you want me to flip it? No, go ahead. You do it from right there if you want. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to let you know all of the schools now are in the middle of the ISAT testing, 
And I actually was up at the junior high this week and uh, Principal Williams has done a great job of really changing the testing setup this year for the junior high students. Their, um, their testing rooms, are they have two of them, so students are allowed to have, she changed her schedule as well, so students are having more time to stay in a consolidated time to work on their assessments. I think in the past they did it so they would work like an hour a day traveling each day working through the assessments. Um, and all, as well, students who needed more time on the assessment because they are not timed uh, the second lab was allowing for kids who wanted to come back in the afternoon and then finish up on their assessments. They had time to do that. And it seemed very, kids were working very hard and, um, and, and taking their time, taking it seriously. So we have that going on in the district. And then Mr. George also mentioned about the sophomores. That glitch happened this week, but they will be working on that. Um, fourth quarter in the district is always a time where we gather a lot of data. So um, just even in the past three weeks since, since I've been in this role, I've been meeting regularly with not only the leadership team, the administration, but also all of the directors, um, transportation, facility, food service. We're meeting as a team um, weekly to start identifying are things that are working well, our efficiencies, and what maybe our inefficiencies are. And we'll continue that as the data starts rolling in with student achievement. Regarding the five-year strategic plan, um, Superintendent Brannon, when she was here, uh, had um, set up create, um, a contract with Quantum Learning. And so the kickoff for that, because that is the main um, beginning point of the five-year strategic plan, we are scheduled for our first day of training on Friday, May 12th. And um, Sherry Murphy will be here for that day. And the first hour of the day from eight to nine o'clock, she will be working with all certified staff. And then after that, she will work three hours with all of the classified staff, and that would include food service people, bus, secretaries, um, maintenance, and custodians. And I talked to her this week, and she said it's really important um, with quantum learning that everybody in the district understands their role in, in the district and helping all students be successful. And so she will be working with those staff on that day. And then in the afternoon for two hours, she will be working with our district leaders. So that will click off, or kick off quantum learning. We'll when get that will the go in. Pardon? When will the subs go in? Okay. That's a good question. I. What, did did you sign up for training on no, that? No, I asked. Nobody's ever handed me anything to sign up, so I'm guessing none of the other subs have been invited either. But no, a lot of those subs work a lot. They should be. Yeah, thank trained. you for that. So I don't have that answer, but I'll try and find that out. Maybe um, Superintendent Branham had discussed that with Sherry, so okay. I can check with her and see. She did think it was a good idea for the subs to go as well. Right. That's what we need. Right. Yeah, so I'll find out. Thank you for asking that. And then we are continuing our work with the implementation of the four-day week for next year. Uh, the, the principals, uh, we are all working on schedules, trying to, we've, we've settled on, we have our start and ending times, and it's really working. The challenge is for us, um, we have a number of shared staff in the district, like, um, a, the high school shares with the junior high. We share the music teacher with Priest River Elementary and Priest Lake. And we share a PE teacher between all of the schools at different. So there's a, so and with that said, we are working on that, getting the schedule together for the four day. Um, and then 
the curriculum. We will be working on that. That is in the five-year strategic plan and just planning on meeting actually with the two trustees that are assigned to that um, to be, get that committee going, the ELA committee going uh, soon so that we can uh, work on that in the plan as well. And then we have the 3C meeting scheduled for May 10th, and uh, that is going to be at the high school at 6 o'clock to uh, address any questions anybody has about the levy funding. Okay. Did you have a question? Well, just on the curriculum committee, because we kind of ran into a roadblock, so we yeah. just got some information back, and so we are on top of that now. So, okay. We'll so I can talk to soon. you, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We were awaiting, I think we ISB. were awaiting, yeah, some Simple. clarification on yep. the law. Yep, the new yeah. law that just passed. Yeah. And then Mr. Eldor has, uh, he's not here tonight, but just an update as far as the building facility committee, he has created an application is getting started on that as well for community members to start a, a group okay. on looking at the facilities. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Okay, good. Next is treasurer's report. Any comment? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is public comment on non-agenda items. Uh, first up is Kathy Nash. The district has put a levy on the ballot to collect from property owners $4.7 million per year for two years. Why is there such a large increase to the last levy amount of $3.4 million? In prior years, the property tax portion of the revenue has been listed at 25% of the budget. This levy will increase the local taxpayers' portion to 33% of the budget. Why? Especially when everyone else in the community is having to tighten their own budgets. According to the district, Three million of this is going to just salaries. The business office was aware that the governor intended to increase all wages around 16% from the state. Why was this not calculated to reduce the amount of what was needed for the levy? The state only reimburses the schools for 62 teachers, yet the district employs over 82 certified staff. Why does this district continue to make the local taxpayers foot the bill for their inability to manage better the staffing needs? On top of this, they want to keep all of the ESSER 3 funded counselors and aides that were hired with the federal money for this year. Why should the local taxpayers be required to pay these salaries if the feds won't? And uh, so these are a few of the questions that need to be answered before uh, we allow this levy to pass. I also want to mention that I went to a meeting last night where the treasurer from the county was saying that they got um, 28 properties on the list to be um, taken over because of the, um, the campaign of taxes. So, thank you. Uh, next is Faith Brenham. Brenda. Brenham, I'm Brenham sorry. Long, so. No, you're fine. Um, first, I wanted to take part of my time to thank Keith and Susan specifically. Um, the last meeting I was at, you did your constituents proud by sticking to your guns on the levy, and we all really appreciate you. Felt like I needed to make note of it because there were um, several people in the room that I was very bothered by because they were very disrespectful to the both of you, so just wanted to say thank you. The other thing I wanted to mention was changing the meeting locations. Officer Davis brought this up, and it concerned me. I, I love the idea of changing the location. I think we've outgrown where we are. I think the thing to consider is if we're in a school and people aren't able to carry a firearm, is there a way to provide security that's adequate for a larger group of people? Um, I'm concerned specifically because I know that there were threats made regarding the levy to trustees. And so a disc, it's not impossible for me to imagine a situation where there could be cause of danger um, 
due to disagreement, whatever, and if people aren't able to defend themselves, I think it would be prudent for the district to work out a way to provide some sort of protection um, so that we're not leaving people wide open to a risk. So I would love if that could be part of your discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next is Lindsay Sauce. Good evening, West Bonner School District. Um, my name is Lindsay, and I have three children in the schools in our district. Since my family's moved from homeschool to public school, I have uh, found many ways to get involved and help to support our schools. I'd like to begin by saying that we should all be asking ourselves what is going on behind the scenes in our community that was so egregious as to make our superintendent walk off the job in the middle of the school year. There are several folks who should be ashamed of their behavior towards Superintendent Branham, and our actions and those actions serve no productive purpose. You know who you are. What a shame for our children, our community, that we had someone take on the task of trying to right this sinking ship, listening to the community concerns, hosting meetings, working countless hours of overtime and working with our principals to come up with solutions and a clear direction for our school district, and we ran her off. So here we are again with no clear leadership or direction. It is a pivotal point for our district. There are many outside influences that will continue to degrade our children as they are every day. There's various means, such as our nutrient deficient processed foods we provide in our schools, our dumbed down curricula and trendy new politically correct ideas that will continue to serve their, their intentions, which are distancing the beautiful hearts, minds, and bodies of our children further and further from the truth of who God created them to be. What an awesome opportunity we have right now to regain control of our children from those outside powers that be. We must come together as a community to make that happen. It saddens me when I hear comments about some folks not having a valid say simply because they haven't lived here as long as the next person. Small bigoted thinking only divides and weakens the whole community. It's time we all stood up, took responsibility for our actions and how we treat one another. Where we lead, our children will follow. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Next on the agenda is board reflection. Does anybody have anything they want to say? Um, I probably should have brought this up where we like member reports, but I don't know. I wanted to talk about. Um, speak up. Speak up. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things for people in the community. Um, I've been, you know, since. You all heard me last month say that I, I wanted to have a, a better audit for the district before we move forward. Um, and, you know, it's, to me, I, I just want to have people know where our money is going, what it's being spent on. I think everyone has a right to that. And, you know, are we always going to agree? Absolutely not. God made us to all be individuals and everyone has a right to their opinion. But I just wanted to share a few things with people that I had found out. Um, and I wish Troy had or not had a bad bet because I wanted to piggyback off some of the stuff. I know he knows about this. But uh, back in 2019, the prior board had uh, gone ahead and made a decision to pay out to, and I always say their name incorrectly, McKinsley? Ms. McKinsley. Okay. McKinsley. The, the um, architect group, $184,000. And this was just to be used for building, or excuse me, for creating designs for the PRE cafeteria and to flip the offices, correct, so that we had a better secure entrance to the school. 
And if any of you have ever been to that school, they definitely need to have something done. That cafeteria is not a good setup. Um, however, this was done before I came on the board. And um, my understanding is from talking to Ken and then from um, being at the meeting last, I think it was maybe last May, um, when that group came and started talking to us about that they had redone the bid. Um, initially it had started out where the board said we had 2.3 million to work with. They came in initially and said it was going to be 2.6 and the board said, well, we don't have it. You're going to have to go back to the drawing board. So then when they did come back to the next meeting where both of us were then, you know, on the board, they came back at 4.6. So my question is, are you doing common core math? Because if the board's already told you before that they only had 2.3, but then you come back with, you know, where my thinking on this was really strange. And so then Ken said, well, you know, that 184000 that we had given you, that was supposed to come off the top of the project. And they informed him, no, that was just for us to draw the pictures. And so, you know, just trying to share with you how sometimes money is spent on things that not everyone might think that was a good use. We definitely need some stuff done for that school, no doubt. But if I remember correctly, the walls were like 16 feet. They're all glass. That's going to cost us more to heat, more to cool. Our kids need a nice room that's safe and secure. And I want to see that happen. Um, another thing I found out was we, back in 2019, used a company called Camp Creative for a survey. And the district wanted to see what the community thought of how they were handling things. We paid $23,000 for that survey to go out to folks. And I believe that when we just did a survey on four day, we did it internally with through email and so forth with parents and staff. I don't think that cost us anything. I could be wrong, but I don't think that cost us $23,000. Um, and then once they had that information, they spent $46,000 on sending out the really fancy postcard that everybody got that lived in the district. So my goal is just to give you the information as I find it. What you choose to do with it is yours. And I am definitely, please don't misunderstand this. I am not against our children having the very best. I think they deserve a shot at the moon. I just want to make sure money is being spent properly so our kids can get better. That's all. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Do you have I just want to, Steffi, will you, can you verify the Camp Creative for the next meeting for me, the expenditures that we have on Camp Creative? Uh, yes, I have them printed off. Tristy Brown sent me an email, and I actually have copies here. Because it was more than just a survey, and I have to say that the survey we did for the four-day, I think, was lacking. It was not, yeah, it, it was definitely totally lacking. It wasn't yeah. a decent I'm service. I was just looking at, at the survey, dollar And then we got more, yeah. we got more. Yeah. What you said? I can take it off, but it's just the initial email. But in the attachments, it has everything that oh, I can say. Oh, yeah, 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 by all means. No. Yeah. No, and I, because I was on the board at that time, and I think that we have tried very hard. Um, we wanted to, look, the board at that time, and since I was on there and Troy was on there, but I, we, we were looking at ways to try to better communicate. And those postcards, Yes, they might have been expensive, but it was try we were getting complaints right and left about we're not doing communications. And I'm sorry, we were looking for ways to deal with that. And if you had been there at the same time, I mean, that's part of it is how do we communicate with our constituencies when our district is 780 square miles? And each time, community development, community communications is not easy. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it was a way to try to get that information about the school district out to the, 
the members of this, um, the patrons of this school district. And yes, it might have seemed expensive and maybe we didn't get the return, but we were looking for it. The other thing about the McKinn Street designs of 185,000, I agree that it, it was, our understanding was on top. We own those designs. Right. That's the other thing is we pay for them, we can use them. We can have somebody else use them. So I would say that, I mean, I think that people today, my own reflection on only of all of this, people today were worried about the meeting at the last time when we voted on the levy. But when I was chair, I got a lot of heat for the way I was running, and nobody spoke up about how I was, you know, getting, people were disrespectful to me when I first started out as being a chair. So that's part of the deal of being, you know, we want people to be respectful of one another, but people's memories sometimes are very short about how people can be disrespectful. We should be respectful of each other all the way along, whether we agree or disagree. Because it shouldn't be just because I agree with you and you all are disrespectful. Um, you know, if somebody disagrees with you and you're disrespectful of someone else, I mean, we should be the same line should be um, drawn for everyone. And we should not be subtly bullying people, subtly harassing people. I don't agree with people, you know, being threatened. You know, people should not be threatened. Um, it doesn't matter who it is, bottom line. And we should also not be scared. I mean, I think in the last, in this last week, we have seen where people have knocked on people's doors and have shot people. There was a woman that was shot out in New York State Oh, I um, here. No, people. Have, they knocked on the. They knocked on the door. People. Are, we, we're creating a sense of fear in how we are acting, and I agree. We have to be careful, but at the same time, fear breeds fear, which breeds defense, defensive measures. You know, and I think we just have to be careful on that of how we move forward. And I think we all agree that we're trying to do the best job we can for the students of this district and this community. Um, we are also under the gun of trying to do that, or else we'll lose our competitive, any competitive edge that we ever had. And we also had a previous board that was harassed a lot and got terrible emails and was called out some things that was in her personal life. So it, it, it has to stop. You know, it's not fair to what happened to you, to her, or to the past um, board member. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's been going on for a while. And just, when it's, at, when it's, it's like nimbyism. When it happens in your own backyard, then you, you pay attention to it. But it's not something new. Okay. It has been going on for a long time, and we need to stop it across the board. <coughs> There's some way to say. Sorry. Any other comments? Yes, what a, what a wonderful thing that uh, Jackie Brown then did with the three C's, which is free and helping the communication. Mm -hmm. She did, thank you. Thank you for that, Maureen. She did, and it allowed a, a, a talking place for all of us to share. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, too, uh, in regards to finances and budget, um, there are so many questions, and school finance is not an easy answer. Um, there are just so many aspects to it. And I know, Kathy, you've spent a lot of time uh, reviewing books and, and going through things. Um, the governor, you know, they make it sound, media is just so misleading in so many ways. They make it sound like we will be getting all this money that will, will go exactly to salaries or whatever they say, but in the reality, and we'll be going to workshops tomorrow to find out about all the new things that are happening. Um, it trickles down in a variety of ways. With that said, um, we, it is challenging. It's heartbreaking to hear that people are losing their homes. Um, it's heartbreaking if a district collapses because they don't have the funds to operate their schools. I think about one, another thing that Superintendent Branham really, you know, the gift she gave to our district was creating this five-year strategic plan. And um, 
with the intention that we would move forward to excellence for our students and our families. And, um, and thinking about that, and I've been thinking about that a lot, I stepped into this role because, um, because I'm passionate about our students in this community. Not only our students that come to public school, but our students that are homeschooled and our students that go to private school because every family's journey is unpredictable. I mean, we never know. Someday, if you're a homeschool parent, you might need public school at a time in your life. Sometimes our public school parents are able to homeschool and they pull their kids and do that and we certainly want to be there for them too. It's our job as adults to raise these young people to be model citizens in our country. With that said, the finances and the budget. Has it been perfect in the past? No. Will it ever be perfect? Well, there's only one area that's perfect. I think many of you have spoke about what perfect is, not here on this earth. Okay, so with the five-year strategic plan, one of the things I've been thinking about, a pillar really, and I think Superintendent Brennan spoke about this a lot, that we would set this plan in place, we would try and implement this plan to the best of our abilities, and all of the finances would support that plan. And in order to support that strategic plan, we, we need funds to do that. But the other piece that I have been thinking about, and I've had a lot of conversations with Steffi and looking at the books and with Chair Rutledge, I think that should be part of our five-year strategic plan too. Um, how do we, how do we do like you do a family budget, you know? How do you pare down and still get a very efficient model? Or how do we struggle with increasing costs but still keep our buses going and our classrooms. I mean, I don't think anybody here wants to have a classroom where we have 35 kids to one teacher. So there are realities and, and, and if, we, if we take money from one area, we only have a certain amount of money, so if we're going to commit and then we're talking about efficiencies a lot. If we're gonna move money somewhere, we just need to understand that when we're moving it somewhere in one pot, it's just moving the money from one, one part of our district to another. So it's horrible the, the way that people are treating each other. And one of the things in the quantum learning, there are eight keys of excellence and Ms. Parker and I read those out loud to our staff. Mm -hmm. What we can't do is we can't control people. We can't control the social media when they post and say that I've said this, when I haven't, I don't even know who the person is. I mean, I've had people post that they've come to me as an administrator, they've had a conversation, I said this, and I don't even know who the person is. And then they come back on after they've raked me over the coals. And then they say, oh, they met with me and now it's fine, thanks everybody. I'm sure you've had these experiences too, but this is America today. And so the more that we can, I'm probably talking too long. It's, I guess it's the reflection. But the more that we can look forward, plan forward, Think about the kids and think about each other and um, really try and, and do that, I guess, in a, a loving, kind way. And we, we have to agree to disagree on some things. I mean, I'll just be in front of you to say, I know we need that money. I know some of you, the levy is just like a no, and that's okay. I'm glad that you're here tonight. I hope you're glad I'm here tonight. But we want to do what's best for all kids in this whole West Bonner County area. That's the end of my reflection. Okay. Thank you. Keith, I have, I have one more thing that will be very quick. But okay. it's, um, 
I, I took a calculation because people were throwing around $32 million for the last um, decade or so that we've spent on levies. I ran how much we've spent on levies back to 2006. That was $37,640.55.37. That's based on the Three. app. 37,000, 37,640,555.37. If we had, st if that's at the time when it was switched from $3 a thousand to having to run levies. If we had had $3 a thousand from 2006 forward, where we didn't have to scramble all the time, we would have had versus 37,640,555.37, we would have been collecting $94,501,315.42. We went for went $56,860,760.05 since 2006 to now. And so that's the difference is we keep asking, you know, we've been running this district on a shoestring budget the best we can. And we ask, and I might, you know, looking at it is we've been putting in and stop gapping and fixing things the best we can um, and probably and done a, a good job. But at the same time, you know, we've had to, that, that's how much money has not, you know, and even if it were $2.50 a thousand, but we basically, there's a lot of money that could have kept this community, the school, built this school district and kept this community maybe functioning as a community versus at, at odds with one another. But I think we spend every two years, we are at odds with one another. We built, we, we beat each other mm -hmm. up and then we try, and then we, and somebody said, we have to be a good example of, of we have to be good examples to our kids. I'm sorry, we're not very good examples to our kids when we're doing this every two years, is my feeling. Okay. So that's my other reflection, but looking, running those numbers, seeing what we forgave, and granted, it was, it was at a time, but I don't think it would have been the same amount, but there was a lot of money that, um, because of the sales tax, because of that dip in sales tax and everything else, that's how much money we were giving up. Okay. Any others? Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. We make a motion to adjourn. I second that. Okay. Trustee Hall makes a motion to adjourn. Vice Chair Brown seconds. Motion or uh, a meeting adjourned. Say thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. You're welcome. So we use Jared's numbers. And then I looked at how much with my name and our position on the and taxes, even the solar suits, and that's just now. This is totally satisfying.